Thanks for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Marcella Lee. We're throwing it back to some of our coverage of the San Diego County Fair over the past seven decades. The fair has gone through many transformations before becoming the month long extravaganza it is today. We kick things off in 1986 with a look back at 50 years of the fair's history. John Kalia is our guide looking at all of the changes from names and dates to fashion and flying cow chips. Who would have thought a county fair would mean so much to this quiet settlement? October 8, 1936, a time when cattle were still driven by herd and real horsepower had room to roam. At Del Mar, the San Diego County Fair took its first tentative steps at a place built for $25,000 by the Work Projects Administration. On that October day 50 years ago, there was only one building completed at the fairgrounds. Everything else was under tents, and they needed cover because during that first county fair, it rained nearly every day, all day long. <laughs> Perhaps that's when the rust started on this 60-year-old Fordson. A soggy October caused the date of the second fair to be changed to August, but June became the tradition. The fair has known many names, San Diego County Fair, Southern California Exposition, Del Mar Expo, and now the Del Mar Fair, but they insist on keeping that stuffy sounding exposition. A split second in time frozen 50 years tells a lot about people. Men and women dressed up for their day at the fair, coat and tie for dad, mom's best hat for all to see. And speaking of hats, lids were a standard for most men too. The midway or fun zone was just a few rides for the kiddies. Grown-ups were offered, for those times, a risque girly show, French models the build attraction. You needed 50 cents to get in. The cost this year is 10 times that amount. No question the fair is 10 times bigger, but is it 10 times better? The fair has had its share of turmoil. A rock group called Berlin in 83, a labor protest in 84. There have been occasional reports of management throwing money around unwisely, and until they were too expensive to import, you had to watch for flying cow chips. The fair was a gamble when it began, but most bets were covered the next year when harness and horse racing began. Harry L. Crosby, nicknamed Bing, was the force behind it. One of the board of directors at Del Mar Turf Club was Oliver Hardy. When the cornerstone was laid, California Governor Frank Merriam was pleased with the Spanish design at the fair. Happy it was not, in his words, some dizzy futuristic stuff. Rewinding the fair story is incomplete without mentioning a man who was its living symbol. Tom Hernandez. Tom, I dare you. Don Diego. For 17 years, Tom Hernandez activated his smile every June to be Don Diego. Easy to smile when surrounded by beauty queens such as Raquel Welch. There's nothing like returning to the first love, which is Don Diego. And it's, it's a role that keeps you young because the challenge is there. I've got an 18-year-old, 19-year-old queen. So the challenge is always to look the gallant uh, caballero with her. But two years ago, the day before the fair opened, the smile was a memory. Tom Hernandez had passed away. The Del Mar Fair, second largest in the state, the only one that makes a profit. A newborn 50 years ago, and despite some rough, awkward times, loving care has won out. You've come a long way, Nino. Very cool. We also have some photographs in our archives. This right here is a picture of Raquel Welch, Raquel Tejada at the time. She was crowned fairest of the fair in 1958 at 17 years old. It's so cool to have all of this history here at our station. Let's zoom in now on 1954. Elvis was just emerging as a star. Brown versus Board of Education forever changed the country, and the McCarthy hearings were gripping the nation's attention. With all of that going on, families needed a friendly distraction, and the fair was just the thing. Our Carlo Chiquetto shows us some of the big favorites like Don Diego and the fairest of the fair, along with some big changes, including a child care center. The San Diego County Fair and Southern California Exposition opened its gates today at Del Mar. The big 1954 fair located on the grounds at the Del Mar racetrack will run 11 days and nights until July 5th. Many of the attractions will be familiar to those who have attended in years gone by, like Senor Don Diego. But the fairest of the fair, Pretty Joe Johnson, is someone new and different. And there are all sorts of wonderful surprises. There's a Ferris wheel and carousel and things for the kids you have to see to believe. High speed for the modern age. 
This year there are picnic grounds and expanded restroom facilities. And a child care center allows visitors to leave their children with trained personnel. The ninth annual National Horse Show is held every afternoon at 2 o'clock with open competition from Monday on. In 1967, we got to see the fair in color for the first time in our archives. Join me now for a look back at picture day for the legendary Don Diego and all of the contestants that year for the fairest of the fair. All I can say is that the 60s were something else. You're looking at rare footage found in our News 8 archives of the San Diego County Fair from more than half a century ago. Here's Don Diego posing for photos as he did for decades with the fairest of the fair contestants. Actor Tom Hernandez portrayed the character and was the goodwill ambassador of the fair from 1947 through 1984, the year of his death. This newly digitized film from 1967 was shot on picture day when the contestants got a tour of the fairgrounds. The original film was shown to viewers in fast forward here to showcase all of the fun they packed into the day. On the tour of the cactus garden, this young lady got the point when she sat down, ouch. Then it was on to the midway for a ride on the scrambler, everyone laughing and trying not to get too dizzy. Here's an interesting fact, color technology was brand new for our station back then, and some film was still shot in black and white. This was a transition period. That's why this clip from July 4th, 1967 is in black and white. Around 34,000 people attended the last day of the fair that year. It ran for 12 days, the longest run in its 78th year. It started back in 1880. Attendance topped 400,000, a record. This is the first fair film to be digitized using new technology, so it's amazing to see it so clearly. A window into the past of the fashion, the food, the fun, the old Ferris wheel, and everything that looks familiar but is also so very different now. The black and white is cool, but boy, that color just makes everything so vibrant. Moving now to the 70s, reporter Shirley Clum couldn't deny that everything was bigger with another record setting year, but he wasn't sure if the fair was better. And our David Cohen talked with actor Tony Hernandez in his fourth decade as Don Diego, reflecting on how he had watched the fair grow up right in front of him, from tents to permanent buildings. Changes, he noted, that mirrored San Diego County as a whole. Every year they tell us the fair is bigger and better than ever. Well, whether or not it was better this year, we'll leave for you to decide. But there's no argument that this was the biggest expo ever. By 11.30 this morning, the old attendance record of 610,000 was broken, and the turnstiles are still clicking. When all the figures are checked tonight, overall attendance for the two-week-long fair should be around 640,000. It's going to take a little longer to figure out all the other statistics. Everything from how many tons of hot dogs and hamburgers and other goodies were eaten to how much was paid for the prize-winning livestock. And there's no way to tell how much shoe leather and energy was expended by all those feet walking up and down the midway and through all the exhibitions and other attractions. Nor is there any scorecard on how many tummy aches were caused by the combination of too many sweets and too many dizzying rides in the fun zone. And would you believe, even as all these weary fairgoers are dragging themselves home, People in the fair management office are already starting to plan for next year's expo. And you know what they say about it? That's right. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. I can hardly wait. This is Shirley Klum reporting for TV8 News from the Del Mar Fair. There still is a lot of work to be done, but the 89th edition of the San Diego County Fair doesn't open to the public until next Wednesday. There's still plenty of preparation time for people like Ernie Bertoncini, Expo's carpentry foreman for the past 28 years, a man with more hammer tricks than Olympian Hal Connolly. Expo is getting plenty of hype as usual from Goodwill Ambassador Tommy Hernandez as Don Diego, along with this year's fairest of the fair, 19-year-old Dana Waitley, Miss Carlsbad. They're averaging nearly a dozen public appearances daily as the fair nears. This will be Hernandez's second year with the fair. He reminisced a bit for us about some of the people he shared top billing with and what the fairs meant over the years. Well, I think the public has made the fair what it is year after year because uh, the fair itself has grown as the public in San Diego County has grown. 
and what used to be uh, the dirt roads and the, the, the tents that we uh, rented, you see, for the shows. We now have buildings and everything, that everything has grown with the, with the city itself. You've seen a lot of people who worked with you years ago who have gone on to uh, become name entertainers. Oh, yes, my, especially my fairest of the fairs. They've become very famous. Do you want me to name a few? Name a couple. Well, Marla English, for instance, the first one that went to Hollywood. She was with Paramount, did many, many pictures. Raquel Tejada, who, of course, is famous as Raquel Welch. Michelle Sisk, who was the singing star of the Marina Hotel at Del Mar. Linda Taylor became Miss United States. Uh, Gay Cowie is uh, singing at the MG. Hollywood uh, uh, MGM Hotel in Hallelujah Hollywood. These girls are fantastic. Last year's fair drew a record crowd of nearly 649,000. Expo officials expect 681,000 this year. It all starts June 21st and runs through July 4th. Dave Cohen, News 8 at Expo in Del Mar. So fun to see all that history. The 1980s had the fair starting to take the shape we see today. Jesse Macias was there as the fair's calendar grew while the crowds for some reason shrank. Larry Himmel at large brought his perspective, wondering what the modern Midway had in common with an old time county fair. As he waited for it to end, of course, so he could get to the betting window. There was livestock and live music. And Mitch Duncan brought the decade to a close with a sparkling crystal performance. This year's expo ran 16 days instead of the traditional 14, but despite the additional days, the average attendance for the fair was down about 6,000 a day. And for the people who did show up, they spent less money on thrills and frills, a lot less than in years past. How's business been here the last couple of days? Um, it's doing all right. It's not that good, but Friday you... night was pretty good. But a fair is still a fair, and plenty of good memories were made. I've been blessed this year with a, uh, a very exciting, beautiful girl who has really lived some of the most exciting days of her young life here at the Expo. I have enjoyed it so much. This has got to be the best time of my life. I'll never forget it. And who will be able to forget all those crazy good times spent at the 100th Expo? I got a feeling if you found some guy who lived all of his life in China, and you brought him over here and took him out to one of our Chinese restaurants, he'd have no idea what kind of food he was eating. On the same token, if you found some guy who lived all of his life on a farm in a rural part of Iowa and took him to the Del Mar Expo, he'd have no idea he was at a fair. He'd be looking around for the jams and the jellies and the tractor pulling contest and end up seeing some guy hawking a jacuzzi or trying to sell him a knife that he claimed was so sharp it could split an atom. Still, there is some good fun to be had on the Midway. There are even sheep and cows and pigs and goats. However, the animals are kind of shoved off into one corner, nestled between the beer gardens and the hot dog on a stick stands. But officials have covered themselves by calling this the Southern California Exposition. To them, the word exposition means something between a swap meet and a carnival. But the Del Mar Fairgrounds these days would make a junk food junkie think he had died and gone to heaven. But prices aren't cheap. Inflation has reared its ugly head in the fried food industry and in the stuffed animal industry as well. What once was the dime coin toss is now the quarter coin toss. But still, there are some fun shows up here. You can see a pretty but sometimes bored Ferris to the fair riding around in a golf cart driven by the heavily made up Don Diego. But what I like best about the fair is that its arrival means that racing season is right around the corner. For News 8, I'm Larry Himmel, at large, Del Mar. Marguerite Dignan's Suffolk sheep was not among the leaders in his last competition, and she doesn't expect he'll win a ribbon here either, but she'll spend hours grooming him nonetheless. Livestock are what county fairs are all about. The carnival aspect will draw many people to Del Mar over the next 18 days, but if you come here and don't go through these barns and talk with the breeders, you'll come away just a bit empty. Yeah, not many crowds. We got here around 9 o'clock, parked about a foot from the fence. We'll get out of here in about 20, 25 minutes. That's it. Piece of cake. I've been here every year but two since uh, 1960. You like coming? It's a big pig. <laughs> Can't lose over here. I'm having a ball. <laughs> I don't know, it means 
trash that I had to pick up. The fair is over and the reviews are in. You having a good time? I'm oh, having a great time. Thought we'd come down, pick up the last day, and watch the fireworks. For fairgoers, it's back to reality after the four day holiday. For many who work at the fair, the reality of the last 10 days is not that great. Well, the attendance was up this year, but the uh, money out here was down a little bit. A lot of people don't seem to be playing the games as much as usual. More than a million people came to the fair, and that's a new record for the rides, the games, the exhibits, and the music. Do you hear it? Crystal Gale! Singer Crystal Gale packed them in tonight. We love our music, especially on a holiday. And Crystal took us to the country. On this 4th of July, the music from the grandstand to the midway reminded us of our birthday. Daredevils performed to the music. Other folks tapped their toes and clapped their hands to it. What a holiday celebration in the final few hours of the fair. And it is, of course, still a tradition for many people today. All right, also a tradition eating at the fair. <laughs> Let's talk about fair food. I think of it as the time of year when calories just don't count, right? And you probably bust your budget sampling it all. In 1994, we sent our unknown eater to the Del Mar Fair, which is what it was called back then. He found many of the food selections lacking or overpriced and sent them straight into the circular file. At the Del Mar Fair, the food can be inspirational. Ooh, look at that, huh? <laughs> And it can be disappointing. The chicken's greasy. Real greasy. And as usual, fair food does not come cheap. Eight fifty for two pieces of fish? This is the Del Mar Fair. <laughs> the same place that serves the expensive fish also has clam chowder in a bread bowl. It's a loaf soup. It's five fifty in our first disappointment of the day, destined for the reject file. But this ice cream stand is a must try with that breakthrough innovation cheesecake on a stick that's dipped in chocolate. Mm -hmm. About three bucks with an outstanding flavor, and the same place serves a wonderful ice cream sandwich that's also dipped in chocolate. Just take. <laughs> what do you think? Messy. And also a great taste. For the best bargain, go no further than pizza on a stick. Tasty in just a buck and a half. But in the world of barbecue, the stand in the main drag has a beef sandwich that did not impress. Terrible. With a weak, watery sauce, but there's a stand inside the racetrack area with smokers on the side that serves a delicious beef sandwich. And then there are the cinnamon rolls. Don't buy the cinnamon rolls because they're terrible. They were just awful. This woman informed me all cinnamon rolls are not crazy. Created equal. Well, by the time you got to the bottom of it, it was so hard you could have bounced it on the sidewalk. But at another stand, the rolls were fresh and delicious. That's a cinnamon that roll. Mm. Yeah. Cinnamon roll. That one's good. Yeah. The teriyaki sticks didn't work for me this year. This is five bucks worth with a gluey off flavor that destined them for the reject file. The top place is for me, Pinotti's pasta, which makes it fresh every day. The ravioli here is a highlight, about four bucks and covered with a flavorful marinara sauce. And the Philly cheesesteak sandwich at Stuffy's. Stuffy's is excellent. The vegetables are grilled to perfection. It's five bucks and delicious, but good or bad, the fair food is always an adventure. Who cares? It's the fair. <laughs> yeah. Worry about it tomorrow. For News 8, I'm Deanna Eater. 
I say that every year. We'll worry about it tomorrow. The workouts start tomorrow. Okay, the turn of the century saw the name change back from the Del Mar Fair to the San Diego County Fair. It still had some of the same old charms with farm animals as a featured attraction. We sent Carlo Cicchetto out to the fair to show us how the organizers definitely had their eyes on a big picture. Hello, race fans, and welcome to the 2000 Del Mar Fair. How's everybody doing today, huh? All right, is everybody ready? And there they go, they're off and they're racing this symbol and I can lead. It's from number two coming to the inside. It's two, four, one, and three around turn three. Around turn four to finish on, it's going to be number two. And here we go with a race number two loading in their starting gates. <laughs> And there they go, they're off and they're racing. It's number one out to the lead. It's one, two, three, and four. Here comes number two taking the lead. Around turn three, around turn four to finish on. Who's it going to be? It will be number two. The race was great. Got pick number four. Number four was the best. The number two pig to win. Is that your pig? Is that the one you like? It was good. It was good? Why? Because I liked the pigs. Oink, oink. Got it. <laughs> From before dawn to the mid-morning grand opening, workers rush to make the final cut. There are booths to be opened, ice coolers to stock. A lot of water, sodas, all the kind of drinks. Rides are checked and treats are baked. This is our compound. We Craig Sanders and his wife Kelly have operated the gingerbread shop at the fair for four years now. They can't wait to serve up cookies, cakes, and more. It's a blast. I can't wait till the fair season starts every year. How you doing? The farm animals are stars in recurring roles here. Good fun for kids. So they can kind of get some hands on that they wouldn't normally get here in San Diego. But a false step could turn this family feature into a horror flick for some. The prep work done, it's showtime. Lights, camera, action. Hollywood lookalikes make an appearance. Some fair goers like them hot, others like to share. Everyone gets into the act. Are we going to ride rides together? Are you gonna, I, I, absolutely. Which one are you going to go? Uh, I'm a Ferris wheel guy. I'm so very, very low key. I love Ferris Wheeler's Day Off. That's a great movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. The rides are the whiz bang special effects. 77 in the midway this year, sure to make Cinema Summer a real blockbuster. Cut. <laughs> yes, that was Carlo in 2005. Thank you so much for watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks just like this on CBS 8 Plus, click on the news tab at the top of the screen. I'm Marcella Lee. We'll see you next time.